Hi right, guys, how we doing? Welcome back to the Free Emmas podcast. Uh, just the two Emmas this week. Unfortunately, Stone couldn't be with us. Uh, it's nice to have had him back the last couple of weeks, but couldn't be with us today. So it's just me and Luke. Uh, how's it going, mate? Yeah, good, mate. Uh, apparently, I've got no personality, and our show's a crap show. So, hi, Dan. <laughs> If you're watching, because uh, I know you don't like the free hammers and you're a Spurs fan, but if you are watching, thanks for tuning in. It's another view, another bit, another few pennies in the pot for us. He said, he said I look normal. So oh, like. yeah, yeah. He said you look normal, but, um, uh, I'm surprised I've still got an arm left, to be honest. I quickly bit at that tweet. Uh, thanks for everyone who liked it and retweeted it. Got uh, about 250 likes, which is uh, really, really good. But anyway. Um, Let's start with the World Cup very, very briefly. We'll do, we'll do it briefly because there's so much West Ham news, which we said would happen, didn't we? Uh, we were just waiting for something to happen, and it did. Uh, World Cup, mate. Um, England are out. Um, went out to Croatia. Reached their I... peak for me. Reached their peak. Um, let's look at this as a, as a fan. Let's pretend we're neutral fans. Let's pretend. They're overachieved. They're overachieved. They've done very well. Yeah, no, they they did do better than anyone expected them to do. Um, I have to say, I did think that they were going to beat Croatia. I thought they would get to the final. I don't think they would have beat France in the final. Um, it would have been something. Oops, it would have been something to see to see them get to the final, but it wasn't to be. Um, they started so well that first half. Should have been two three nil up. England's in the first player half. for me. England's player of the tournament, Kieran Trippier, as well. Mm. Lovely goal, uh, lovely free kick, weren't it? Um, but yeah, it just wasn't to be. You know, once that second half started, they started playing like England of old, or mm. I'd say, I always joke about it, West Ham. They started getting a bit nervous, started potentially believing that they could win the thing. And it just wasn't to be. Modric got on the ball mm. a bit more. Perisic, wonderful player. Mm. I think that's exactly it. You know, as soon as Croatia scored, they just started panicking. Um, and uh, you know, I was then I was expecting it to go to penalties because it's tradition for England to go out on penalties. Um, but yeah, wasn't to be. Um, but still, a massive achievement, massive achievement for the England team. And now, like we, we've we've spoke about, you know, not being massive England fans in the past. And like for me, I still don't know if I could handle Harry Kane lifting the World Cup. But I, I, it's just. I don't know. They've 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 done well, and the the biggest thing that I hate about it is the press. And now I I'll be honest with you, I haven't seen any press at all. I don't read newspapers. No, they've been good. I, I hope they're not being good. I hope they're not being slated. I hope no, they no, are no. being praised no, no. for what they did achieve. You know. Mm-hmm. But um, on the other flip side, mate, just one other thing to talk about on the England game. Um, will they ever get a chance like that again? No. I mean, you couldn't, if you could have picked out, uh, teams out of an app, if you could have picked out teams that you wanted to play in the run-up to a World Cup final, you couldn't have, got, you couldn't have asked for a better draw. Um, I, I mean, they, they had such a such a easy running, really, easy group. The only, t- like, obviously, what was it, Tunisia and... Panama. Panama. Belgium. And then Belgium, who they lost to, which obviously done them a favour. And then just, just just an easy running, really, right away up to Croatia, who hadn't been great this World Cup. I, I don't think they'll get a chance They were like dark that horses, again. though, Croatia, definitely. So I was saying that a few podcasts ago um, about Croatia. But, um, yeah, for me as well, I was talking to my old man about it. You expect Italy to come back a lot stronger in four years' time. Germans mm. will never play that bad again. Spain, I assume, will go through a whole re- reassess everything and go again. Maybe Holland will come back again in four years' time. Mm. I, I don't think you're going to get England to get a good chance like that again. They well, they could improve themselves and go on and win it, but I think it showed when they come up against real quality. And this, as you say, mate, Croatia are not outstanding. They've just got two very, very good midfielders in Rakitic and Modric. They couldn't break down. And Lovren's mm. shocking. Lovren was shocking. Yeah. No, I agree, mate. I agree. Like, I mean, Modric is absolute world class. His ball retention is phenomenal. I don't remember seeing him lose the ball. Fantastic player. Perisic is a fantastic player. Brilliant, brilliant for Inter Milan. Um, like, say Rakitic, who apparently we didn't we put a bid in for him 
<laughs> Rakitic this window. The right back um, really good as well. Uh, the right uh, winger as well, Rabic, I think his name was mm. another one. Really, really good player. Mm. I think he's linked with Manchester United. Him, uh, Rabic. But yeah, um, other side, other semi final, very, very quickly. Uh, the French boys, obviously, you all know I've got a soft spot for France. Uh, they've done it, you know. Uh, they, they're not playing well, in my opinion, uh, France. I don't think they're, apart from the Argentina game, they played excellently. I don't think they're playing particularly well, but they've just got a knack of winning at the minute. They've got a winning habit. Uh, they did get through the Belgians. The Belgians did have a lot of chances, but I think, again, it was killing them about unbelievable, or Mbappé, however you pronounce it. He, the flicks, the runs, he's a superstar, absolute superstar in the making. Mm. Pogba was on it as well, to be fair. Pogba turned yeah. up. Yeah, very good team, both, obviously, France and Belgium. It did make me laugh. Um, I saw a couple of the Belgian players whining, saying that France didn't come to play football and it was only football. And this is a Belgium team that, in the previous round, had 10 players in the box against Brazil. Mm. I thought that was quite funny. Yeah. Um, but no, I think I think it's France's to win. Um, I, I think they'll beat Croatia. It, it could be a, a good game. It's probably going to be quite cagey, but it could, could be a good game. But I think France will probably win it. Yeah, I I think France win as well. I think France win it 2-1. Uh, fantastic World Cup, though. Um, mm. I don't think anyone can take that away. It's, it's been an amazing, amazing couple of weeks. really, really has. Uh, and obviously England play their third place playoff game and uh, yeah we look forward to Qatar in four years time well, I was going to say it's, it's been confirmed today that it will be played over the winter mm. so it'd be very very interesting to see what happens there whether the leagues will so work around it three and a half it. years than four years <laughs> I mean this is what I don't get are the leagues going to work around it or are are we going to see nations boycott the World Cup for that year who knows it could happen I mean, if you if you think about it, the guy was saying that I was reading today that it would be it would mean that England would have to start their season three weeks earlier and end their season three weeks late. So that means that not just that season is going to be disrupted. The season before that, yeah, so take a while coming up to that season, yeah. there's only going to be about three weeks before the end of the season and the start of the next one. Yeah. And that's going to happen for the two years either side. That's not a lot of time for things no, to happen. No, it, it totally just throws everything out of balance, doesn't it, by doing that. Mm. Uh, yeah, let us know what you think, guys, uh, about the World Cup and who you think is going to win um, the final game. Uh, that is it for the World Cup. I didn't want to go too much into the into depth for the World Cup this week because there is so much, so much West Ham news to go through. It really is. Um, we'll start with the first one that came through. Jack Wilshere is done. I don't think we spoke about it last week, did we? I think it was done on Monday, Jack Wilshere, weren't mm. it? Listen, you can go back to probably the first ever podcast we've done. I've been ramming on about Jack for years, years, absolute years. And I sort of said it on Jay, a video for Jay that I did. It was about six years ago. I see an interview with him and he said that Paolo De Canio was his hero. And from that moment onwards, I've always had a sort of soft spot for Jack. You know, I've, I've always liked him and I'm glad that we finally got him done. You know, we should have loaned him a couple of years ago when he went Bournemouth. And we probably would have got him the year before. But um, free transfer, it's, it's makes sense. Fantastic yeah, I mean, there's no Absolutely fantastic no brain. I mean, he's uh, as long as he stays fit, and he, for the last couple of seasons he has done, there's no reason to think he would. he's going to break down or anything. Um, I think last year he played more games than Antonio, Lanzini, you know, more games than Carroll, injury, Breed. Injury record as well, mate. A lot of them is... Bone injuries, it's not yeah, so breaks. much muscle injuries, it's more bone injuries like broken mm. leg, broken foot. So, I don't know. Really I, I like reckon hopefully, hopefully, he'll stay fit. And if he does, he'll, he'll be our best midfielder. Oh, easy. He's easy. Technically, technically, the best, probably the best English midfielder of, the gener of this generation. Mm. He's a fantastic player, fantastic player, and he's a massive signing. Um, I know my next door neighbours are actually Arsenal fans, and they were saying they couldn't believe they let him go on a yeah, free. No, my my, uh, my P coaching work absolutely devastated. He's an Arsenal mm. fan, and you know Jack is their sort of their mark, really. You know, like he's there, been there all that time. Mm. But yeah, unbelievable signing for me, and it's long overdue for us to get him. Long overdue. Mm. I actually mm. quite like to see 
Uh, we'll probably discuss them a bit later. I'd quite like to see John Joe Shelby come in as well now to have mm. a real like West Ham base in that midfield. You've got the player that can carry it in Jack, and then you'd have John Joe who can ping. Which... And then you could have Mark sitting just behind them, mate, just for, just for, just for you. No, that's right. Rice is taking that position. But, um, yeah, amazing signing. And as I said, if he wasn't injury-prone, or injury-prone, um, we wouldn't get anywhere near him anyway. He'd probably be a no. 50, 60 million pound player. So, yeah, easy. You... Yeah, fantastic signing. And a, another good thing, we always moan on this channel about England and stuff. Listen, that is an England international. He gets fit. I think Gareth Southgate will pick him again. I think he made a bit of a statement not taking him to the World Cup, but I think Gareth's big enough man to give players a path back if they're playing well. Yeah. Uh, it'd be great to see because he, he is a key part of that England team if he gets himself fit. And back. A lot of newspapers actually talked about newspapers earlier on in the show. We're actually saying, you know, if you had Jack Wilshere in there, he might have been the man to unlock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe that he didn't go, to be honest. I couldn't believe he didn't get called up, but um, there you go. But no, ho hopefully he'll be there. The Euros will be there next World Cup. Fantastic player. Yeah, and still, what, 25 years old? Yeah, mate, he's, he's very young. Great age, great age. Yeah, might be 26, maximum 26, I think. Um, Next one through the door. I keep pronouncing this wrong because I keep mixing him up with a boxer, Lamachenko. I think it's... Um, yeah, Yarmolenko. Yarmolenko. There we go. Yarmolenko. Like, I do. I keep getting mixed up with a boxer. The, the really good boxer, Lamachenko. Um, <laughs> yeah. A few days later, mate. You know, we don't need enough forever. Uh, two come along at once. Bruce, Dortmund winger. Uh, I'll let you say it again, sorry, mate. Yarmolenko. 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 Um yeah, I can't say I knew much about him before, but I did go, as you do, watch your YouTube clips and all that. His debut goal for Borussia Dortmund is an absolute cracker, real cracker mm. of goal. Um, again, it seems like a, a no-brainer, you know, a 17 million opportunity for a player that's I mean, definitely something that we need. He, he looks a bit like Arnie, same sort of build, same sort of movement. Mm. He's, he's signing. He, he's, he was injured, I think, for quite a bit of last season, so he didn't play as many games. Scored against Tottenham um, in Europe, um, really? yeah. <laughs> which is always nice. Um, but yeah, I, I had knew of him from before when he was playing in uh, was playing in Ukraine. Unbelievable record! Like uh, for a winger, he's basically got a one in two record at international level in his time before Dortmund. Is fantastic. Um, Really well hyped. I'm pretty sure he was linked with a, a quite a few big English clubs, like Man United and Liverpool as well. Um, probably before he went to Dortmund, I think he's going to be a really good signing. He seems to have kind of slipped under the radar a little bit with Philippe Anderson, which I'm sure we'll talk about more in a minute. But I think he he could well be the signing of the summer. Yarmolenko. Yeah, I hope so, man. I really do hope so. Um, yeah, it's exciting. You know, he's just. We'll, we'll discuss it in a minute. Actually, I'll avoid that subject because I want to bring it up in a minute. But, um, yeah, another one that looks like it's very, very close. Uh, we won't say the big one yet. We'll say the one that where the shirt was leaked literally on Twitter today, uh, being printed, Balbuena, uh, Paraguayan centre-back, 3.5 million. Seems like he's going to probably come in as a like a cover centre-back. I wouldn't suspect mm -hmm. he's going to start unless, you never know, uh, Manuel Pellegrini may see something in him. But, um mm -hmm. You know, we needed a centre back, and yeah, uh, and apparently he's quite highly regarded out there. I've never seen him play. Uh, I've never heard of him has, before. Has, we were linked yeah. with him, um, but apparently he's quite well, highly regarded over there. Um, and I, I read for again, apparently he's a real leader on the pitch, um, and it seems like, you know, it, it, I think he was captain for the team he's coming from, um, and and it, we have lacked leaders in the last couple of seasons. Well, what we've got so. to give as well, mate, is all these players, they're 28 below. They're mm. below 28 years old. And listen, we're, by, we're there's a project there. That there's a project definitely being shown there. And my God, if on Monday we see Felipe Anderson stand there with a shirt for £40 million, which by all means, it looks like it's done. It does look like yeah. it's done. I'm not even like scared to sort of jinx it a bit now. He's in. He's in London. We all see the videos on Sky Sports News last night of him turning up at Heathrow Airport. It looks like we are. Yeah, I mean, a most places are reporting it as done. Uh, funny enough, the Sun 
uh, in a Dream Team article today, they've already said that West Ham's announced it. Like, obviously, we haven't, but that's how confident they are. And they're talking about how good he's going to be in Dream Team next year. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, it sounds like it sounds like it's done. It's over the line. And I, I, some of the some of the reports I've seen yesterday were saying the price was near a fifty million. Yeah, I think it was raising up to fifty million. I, I mean, can you imagine West Ham spending fifty million on? I mean, that's probably if we win the Champions League or something. Yeah. But even still, over forty million on one player, unbelievable. Yeah, but it just shows the money's been there. And I heard this sort of discussed on Etsy's podcast about. I think their family found a manager that they trust as well. Mm. Well, I've said it so many times mate I said it to you the other day and I've said it before on this show I still don't think I don't think this is Sullivan's money because we've spent so much and it just seems so out of character for everything they've done since that to me this has to be some outside investment I, I, I can't believe this is actually Sullivan putting his hand in his pocket maybe I'm wrong Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe this was the moment he's been waiting for for all these maybe, years maybe. to finally spend yeah. some money. Who knows? How but. excited are you, though? A Brazilian international, £40 million, linked with the likes of Liverpool, I think Chelsea as well, were sniffing around him at mm. some point. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Nice. Incredible, incredible. Um, uh, it's, it's just a sign in that you wouldn't expect us to, to make. The only thing is, because he's coming in on such a high price and because it's been drawn out for so long, there's going to be so much hype around him. Mm. If he doesn't bed in straight away, the fans are going to be on him like that. Yeah. So I just, I just really hope he gets the time. Yeah. You've got to, you've got to give the guy time. You know, it's such a different league. It at least such a slower league. And that's why in other news that we'll probably talk about later with the Ronaldo going there as well. You know, we'll talk about that later, but, um, yeah, and I don't think that's the end of the signings, mate, to be honest with you. Um, obviously, we'll talk about it now. The injuries have happened, obviously. Andy Carroll, trust him to not be starting a season again. Three months. Um, and obviously, Winston Reid as well. I thought Winston Reid would be sold, to be honest with you. Obviously, that's probably going to delay him getting sold now. Um, so, really, I reckon we'll be back in for a centre-half and maybe back in for a striker. I think we was, should have been in for a striker anyway, to be honest with you. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I think we do definitely. I think we needed a striker anyway. Um, now even more so. Um, apparently, we are back in for Alfie Mawson. So. Yeah, him and uh, Jamal Lascelles as well from Newcastle. Yeah, so one of those could be the centre-half coming in. Um, I'd love to see it, one of them two. Again, back to the England thing. you got uh, Fredericks, obviously highly sort of regarded as a potential England right back obviously you've got Walker Trippier and bloody um, that Trent Alexander I think even in front of him but still you know you have him you get Mawson all the cells again you've got potential England centre back there which would be great it would be great for West Ham yeah absolutely I did see this week uh, again Yaya Torre sort of rumours yeah, okay. resurfacing the Stower rumours I think that was his name wasn't it the Juventus guy Star Wars rumours are still floating Star around. Star God knows. Um, Star Wars. Star Wars. <laughs> uh, and apparently Bernard as well, the left winger, mm-hmm. Brazilian left winger as well, was sort of resurfaced again. So Yeah, still some rumours of uh, Solomon Rondon as well. They're still floating. But um, there's still quite a lot can happen. I know I know we um I know it's sort of old news now and it's very, very dead in the water now they still but Dimitri Payet, mate. I think um, it's only fair that we let people know our sort of opinions. And listen, I would take Dimmy back all day long now. Um, I mean, he's a fantastic player. Would I take him back? Depends on the money. Depends on the money. If it was going to be for, like, say, I don't know, saying silly, like ten million. Yeah, of course I'll take him back. But what the rumours were then were like. For more than we sold him for, I wouldn't pay twenty five million for him now. Yeah, I'm not going to. I'm not going to dwell it too much. But uh, so one question that did come up in the X podcast, mate, because uh, they they talked about it in depth a bit. They were saying about so would you have took back? Uh, we talked about it years ago actually on a podcast. I remember now, Frank, Jermaine, or Paul Ince. I mean, Ince was really before 
my time to be honest I couldn't really say much about that um, Defoe yeah absolutely I've said many times before um, I think he was poorly advised ever since the, and this is the difference so Defoe yes Frank no and the biggest difference is ever since Defoe left he's never said anything bad about West Ham he's always had good things to say he's always said he regretted what happened and he regretted the way he left and he, he's got like the club's got a special place in his heart. He's always said that, always, Jermaine. Frank, on the other hand, never misses an opportunity to put the boot in. Never misses an opportunity to slag West Ham off. That's the difference for me. Yeah. No, I just wanted to put that out. I don't want to dis- discuss it for What did they say long. on their podcast? I uh, it was really interesting, actually. They, they were saying uh, about how Jermaine is... Because they... Um, it was Dave, I think, was saying about Dimitri Pite a, a not take him he was really foul mouthed as well like saying he's a dear blah 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 I can't say it on this show obviously because it's a family show but uh, they were saying about Jermaine Defoe saying that obviously he was an ill-advised kid and he's done it went wrong you know and and he was saying about how like sort of Frank he possibly would take Frank back again because of the way his family were treated and the way he was actually treated by the West Ham fans as a kid himself there Maybe he was a bit better because he was always sort of asked to foul. I, I'm, I'm just saying what they said. You know, yeah, there's no yeah. right or wrong answer in it. Um, no one can deny Frank Lampard at Chelsea was an unbelievable um, goal scorer. I would give him that. I wouldn't say he's a world class footballer. He's a world class goal scorer. You know, guarantees you 15 goals a year. And Chelsea haven't replaced that <laughs> since he's gone. Um, but yeah, um, the injuries don't make. I know, I know, we've sort of discussed it, but how frustrating is this now? It's, it's just getting a joke. It is. I mean, Andy Carroll needs to retire. He just needs to to retire. He can't play football anymore. Obviously, he's not going to retire because he's on however much money. I think he's only got a year left of his contract, so that that will be the end of him. I can't see any other clubs taking him. He needs to call it a day. He's not. He's just too injury prone. He needs to call it a day. Winston's a shame. It seems like the last couple of years... He's got that tag now. Yeah, the injuries have started coming more frequently. Um, Doesn't look good for Reid. And, uh, uh, yeah, like you say, I think think he would have probably been sold as well if there was someone to take him. Um, I don't think we'll see much more of either of those at West Ham again. Mm. Um, Some selling, obviously... Reese Burke went really a uh, touching post uh, on Twitter, you know, about how he achieved his dream, and um, he j- he just had a stepped up, you know. We we we're not experts, we're not football scouts, none of us are, none of us fans that go are, are real experts. When you look, you see Reese Oxford play, you see Reese Burke play, and then you wonder why mm, why don't we see these youngsters play as much? Then you see Declan Rice come through last year, and you realise how much of a level the difference is. You really do. When you see a youngster of that ability, you realise how actually far behind the others are. No, I absolutely agree, mate. Absolutely agree. Um, like you say, it, I think it took that for a lot of the fans. It took Rice coming through, and like you see, just seeing how the gap between him and those boys, and where they need to be if they want to be playing in the Premier League, and they're just not there. And it's a shame. It, it is a shame because it's been a long time now since we have had someone come through. Um, Nathan Holland apparently is by all means meant to be the next one that we're going to be seeing coming through possibly next season, season. Mm. which would be great but um, yeah sad to see Reese Burke go but that is football unfortunately that is football you know um, yeah wish him luck you know I mean the thing is is when you look back when was the last time we let a young player go and they've actually really gone on to do anything I mean the only player I can really think of is Junior Stanislas yeah, yeah, he's done well, isn't he, at Burnley, yeah. I can't think of any other player that we've let not, go. Not, from, not since, like, your Frank days and Joe. Yeah, that's Mike, what I mean, and, you yeah. know, in recent times, like, the youth players that we've sold or let go, like, you know, where are they now? Where's Frank Lubel now? Remember him? Yeah, he was supposed to be the next Pretty serious. Didn't really go on and do much, did he? Zavon Hines, but <laughs> for all the accounts, he's arrested, and he or somewhere or playing for Dagdam and Red Bridge. I can't remember the last time, and, it, and he looked really good when he first broke in. Zavon Hines, obviously Jack Connison got his injury. James Tompkins, he was he was 25 when we sold him, no, weren't he? So he was a bit older, but um, yeah, I think 
it was uh, seeing Rice has proved, you know, what sort of level you need to be at, and he really isn't. Hopefully, he's still starting. Apparently, there are lots of rumours that he is going to be playing in that CDM role, which is fantastic for him because I think he could be the new Michael Carrick. I'm going to use them words, you know. He's, I think he's got that sort of style about him, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a couple of other things announced, mate. We've got a new sh- uh, sleeve sponsor was announced. I saw that actually. Well. Yeah, quite smart actually. quite smart actually. I thought when I see it, I thought, yeah, that looks quite good. That like the lion and then the the wine on each. I was like, yeah, that looks quite smart. It looks better than just a big patch yeah. sticker <laughs> stuck on your arm. And then I saw someone pointed out it looks like Villa's badge, and it kind of ruined it for me. Yeah. <laughs> so now it looks like an Aston Villa badge on the sleeve, but. No, no, it's, uh, it's quite decent. Um, I, I have no idea the financial implications, how much it's worth or anything like that. No. I'm not a fan of shirt sponsors in general, to be honest. Uh, sorry, like sleeve sponsors. You know, I don't think it'll be long before we end up looking like some of the South American clubs with like six sponsors on the front and four yeah, on the back. Yeah. No. Um, I don't really like that. I don't want to see this going that way. I've, right, the, the, the international shirts I've loved, I've got, as you've seen on the podcast the last few weeks, I've got loads of of the international i love it without even a sponsor they just look so clean they look so nice yeah no I, I'm, i've got loads of international shirts this year i've really like got into the the vibe of the world cup just makes you feel a little bit more into it um but yeah you know it doesn't look as bad as the bloody what did we have tires or something like that last year big like red um, sticker yeah the red like just look like a red sticker stuck on the arm yeah <laughs> yeah bit of an improvement um yeah, that's sort of it for West Ham news. Um, I'm sure there'll be loads more. Obviously, there's still the official announcement of Anderson to come and Balbuena. They've not been officially announced. We're just assuming that they're done. I think we can say they're done, really. I think we can say that. That's not me yeah, being, a, being a, in the night. I reckon, I reckon one of them will probably be announced tomorrow, probably Balbuena. Yeah. yeah. And Anderson on Monday. That's what I reckon. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, in other football news, we I did say we'll discuss it. Ronaldo, mate. Um, 105 million or 110 million was it so i can't remember the exact figures what a signing for juventus you know even at 33 and it makes sense 33 slow league yeah i mean yeah it's for ronaldo it makes sense like you say going to a slower league where he's still going to shine Guaranteed he's still the league. easily easily one of the best players in the world well he, probably him and messi are the best players in the world you know there's, there's not really any competition um, fantastic move for Ronaldo. He goes to Juve, can play there, like you say, in a slower league, be a star of the league, he will tear that league up. Although it's a more defensive league, which would be interesting to see. But I don't really see how it makes sense from Juventus's point of view. I suppose maybe for marketing, but they've walked the league title in Italy for the last, what, five, six years? Yeah. Yeah. But they don't need Ronaldo. It's a, I, I don't Unless know. it's because. Uh, you know, they've, they've gone close to the Champions League a couple of times, haven't they, recently? Mm. Like, like semi-finals and stuff. Maybe, is it that just they want that little push? Possibly. Maybe? But, I mean, is Ronaldo as good as he is going to win you a Champions League? Yeah, I don't think... He's a great player. Let's not take anything away from him. But, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I, That's why I can sense that he's been bought yeah. to maybe just try and potentially get him over the line. Like someone like Chigi's probably kicking himself. I know he's got PSG who obviously will spend big anyway to try and win the tournament. But, um, yeah, interesting one that was. And it'd be very interesting to see who replaces Ronnie now. At, That's um, the big question next. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's probably going to be... I think Hazard. Um, possibly could be Hazard. And Bappe, obviously, could could well be... I'd love to see him at Barca, Bappe. Bappe. I'd love to I am Barca. praying Harry Kane. Oh. I want. I've been waiting for the last two years for Real Madrid to come in and take Kane. He, he, mate, he ain't got long left there. He ain't got long. He ain't got. Long. <laughs> he ain't got long. Then we can start liking um, him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then, like, mate, I was actually thinking this during during the World Cup where we were talking, and I was and I was thinking about Harry Kane winning the World Cup and how much. Honestly, I would have hated it. And then I I was thinking more about it, and I I was thinking about Gareth Bale when Gareth Bale played for Tottenham. I couldn't stand oh, him. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely couldn't stand him. Hated him. Always scored against West Ham. Always scored against everyone. But hated him. Couldn't stand him. Went to Real Madrid. Oh yeah, that was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's I true. Think it's Bell. true, mate. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Um, the only player I actually, oh, I think I say it all the time, is Christian Eriksen. He's the only one I can. I don't actually have a real uh, hatred for. Like I actually 
I've got, I don't mm, it's kind of on the periphery. I've got to say, even I do like, like Trippier. Uh, like, hopefully, uh, Trippier. Funny enough, even like great. going back to Modric when he was at Tottenham, mm. hated him. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, now Modric is class. World oh, class. Yeah, 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 world class. <laughs> <laughs> when Toby Alderweireld joins that, Man United in a few weeks' time, he's world class. I've got the top, them Tottenham blinkers. are just. Oh, mate, it's, it's burnt in. It's burnt into the soul. The hatred you got. I just can't see. And Deli Ali. Oh, God, I hate that geezer. <laughs> I hate that geezer. I hate, I hate him. I hate him. It, I've still got a bit of hatred for Carl Walker because I still see him as a Tottenham, even though he's still sort of. Yeah, I know what you mean. Not yeah, forgiven, I know what you mean. Not forgiving him. It's a shame about Trippier. Like, I, w- I would have uh, like, loved us to have signed him a couple of years ago. He's, he's sort of been about for there a while. There were rumours that we could have signed Harry Maguire as well, mate. Another one who's had a fantastic that, yeah. up. Like You could have got him for about 10. How much is he worth now? The geezer wins every single header. He's an absolute monster of a player. Really, really good player. Um, I think that's sort of it in terms of uh, football news. We will carry on with our top five that we started last week. That yeah, I know quite a few of you enjoyed, actually. So that was the top fives in our lifetime and top five of current. So we did goalkeepers last week. We obviously had your Neuers, your Buffons, your Siemens, your Kahn's, your oh, Schmeichels and things like that. So this week, two centre-backs. Obviously, we'll do the top five and we'll try. Now, this, me, Paul and Lee, because we didn't know he was not going to be on the show. We, you're racking your brains and you've got some absolute, unbelievable units of men. <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's, that's so I wrong. Say, but... like my, my picks are really skewed. Well, I tried to make the current more balanced, but the all-times... I'm so biased towards Italy or something. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> we'll start with uh, we'll start with the all times. Um, oh, do you want to start with the all time or do you want to start with the current? Oh, right. we'll, oh, we'll right. we did, we Please remember, all time is just our life. our life. So yeah, we're going from sort of when we started liking football, like sort of 1990 to now, basically. So don't think we've missed Bobby out on purpose or Franz Beckenbauer or anyone like that. We just never seen them play. It's ones we have seen play on telly, etc. Yeah. 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 Okay, so current. Um, should we start from sort of fifth and sort of work our way up and try and discuss it? Well, I think there's I mean, some four and five, is... so we'll, we'll throw some names in the and we'll try and make a list. So I, I've got five down. Um, I'll go for. Uh, all right, I'll go for one that probably would be on the lower end of the scale. I don't know, because for me, I'm just looking at my five names now. There's two absolute standouts, and then the rest could be anywhere. Mm. Uh, under, uh, let's 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 throw out Chiellini. I'm going to throw out Chiellini. Yeah, for, uh, for me, mate, as well. Unbelievable, you know. Um, he's getting on a bit now. What's he about 33 now? But still, the geezer the geezer's been about a long time, and he. I, don't, I, I know you're biased as well, Italy, mate. But I, I can sit back and say, listen, Italian centre halves are the best. They are the best centre halves in the world. They are. They they've made their whole their whole philosophy of football is solid back four and I, I'm sure your all time list mate uh, I probably can name it now but I'm not going to <laughs> but uh, yeah Chiellini unbelievable it, and he probably would even touch the all time list nearly he would yeah it, I, I I didn't put any of my current on the all time list I wanted to keep it separate yeah. but yeah I mean what a player won it all won everything with Juventus <clears throat> absolute warrior proper leader captain Absolutely fantastic player. I, I love watching play. Can carry the ball out, wins everything. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's just a um, fantastic uh, defender. Again, I'm going to put one in. Again, probably would have... He definitely makes a top, a top 10 list and possibly even makes a top five. And I think, again, he was sort of a bit of a star of the World Cup. I think you've got to put Godin in there. For me, mate, Godin's top two in the World Top two, yeah. Easily. Two. Easily, mate. Godin and Ramos. Just, yeah, just slipping yeah, one in there as yeah, well. Yeah, I was going to say, Ramos... Ramos is probably my number one. Them two for me are the top two in the world. But yeah, Godin, absolute unit, absolute Again, unit, and especially like you say in this in this in this World Cup, like the man was an absolute monster everywhere. Yeah, no, really, really good, really, really good centre half. Um, I'd put PK in there. Again, I, I think is is PK. PK is very good. He, he is a good defender. He's a good ball playing mid, uh, defender. But I think sometimes he's protected by your, your Ramos's and could potentially be made to look a little bit better than he actually is. 
Yeah, I mean, the P PK is class, <coughs> but again, yeah, I know, I, I agree with what you're saying. He did make my list as well, by the way, he did make my current list. Um, there was a few that probably could have gone on the sort of lower end of that list. PK is on there, but again, is another player who's won absolutely everything. Yeah, well, on that, on, on sort of PK, mate, like another player, but probably, again, he, he's going to be on the list in a few years' time, probably, is Rafael Varane. He's been immense, absolutely immense for World Cup, and he's been immense for Real Madrid. Again, another player, he's won everything, more or less, and he could be a World Cup winner in, in uh, two days' time. But, um, yeah, he's been hyped for ages, old Varane, as well, and he's sort of really stepping up levels. It really is, really, really is good centre-half. Um, in the Prem, though, in the Prem, is there anyone who sort of... Uh, uh, Toby Old... No one in the Prem made my list. No one in the Prem made my list. If I, um, put in top, if I had to put a Prem player in, I think Toby... Older world is um, the best defender in the Premier League. No. Um. Yeah, probably. If you look in United, haven't really got anyone. And the city two, the two, the city centre halves. They're not. I wouldn't say they're like amazing. They're not. I don't think they're on that level. Uh, Chelsea have got Azpilicueta, who's been very good. Mm. Very good. Um, like I, Virgil Van Dijk, I like, quite like him as well. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's got to obviously be more consistent at that level to see how good he actually is. Yeah, I don't think there's any in the Premier League on that kind of level. But uh, my my last one, by the way, just to fill out five was Hummels. Oh well, yeah. I would say company company was world class before the injuries. He was a few years ago. He made the list, no problem. Mm. Um, but yeah, not not anymore. And he's not good enough to go on an all time list. So yeah, he, um, he doesn't get yeah. uh, doesn't get on the on the list. Yeah, before the all time list, mate. Uh, just quickly, I know we've done this a long time ago, but for any new viewers, because we've had quite a few new subscribers. Uh, West Ham ones very quickly, mate. Just uh, some centre backs on the West Ham of our, our generation. Remember, our well, your generation. your favourite, mate. Big Igor. Igor, mate, it is. Igor Stimmat is the best centre half that I've seen play for West Ham. He, there probably are some other ones in there, but um, obviously Rio as well. But uh, Stimmat, real fond memories of him. Excellent pass with the ball. I say it all the time, and that's why I've got a bit of a soft spot for Croatia as well. Just every Croatian we've ever had has been a good player. Well, obviously, Slab, Slab, yeah, mate. Slab, Slab, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I can't say I remember him playing though. Like he, he is our generation, but I don't actually remember him playing. Um, yeah, was there any others? Obviously, there is. There's like uh, Ian Pierce was fantastic as well. Played up front. <laughs> yeah, uh, just going through some of the classics here, like Razor Ruddock, uh, Daily Repka. Oh wow, Christian <laughs> Thomas was the right back. Yeah, uh, Christian. Uh, Christian though. Ginge, Ginge, Ginge has been fantastic. Yeah, but... yeah, mate. I tell you what. See when they first signed Ginge and Gabidon. Brilliant, absolutely fantastic for us yeah. when they when they first signed. Brilliant. Yeah. All time list, All right? For me, mate, I've got to say, num that for me, there's. I'm biased a little bit with French with your Frank Leboeufs and Marcel Desaid. Right. Well, Desai made my list. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go, mate. You, you can talk about Desai. Desai. <laughs> well, I think he was like the first sort of footballing defender, really. Um, really, really good player. Um. Whenever we used to play Chelsea, he was just an animal. It, very athletic for a defender as well at the time. Obviously, during that generation, you was your lumpy, big Tony Adams or, you know, Martin Keowns, and you had this guy who could actually play a bit of football. Really, really good player. Really, really good player. Brilliant player. I remember back in the day playing, like, old FIFAs or the old Pro Evos. Um, that's why, bam, straight away, I had to be signed to get on my team. Fantastic player. Yeah. Um, for me... The oh man, I don't even know what order to put these in. Do you want to do, say, you want to do some Messi. obscure ones first? Should we name some obscure ones before we do the list ones? If I cover anyone in your list, I'm sorry. But, uh, <laughs> but I, I'm going to name some obscure ones that I really like that may probably don't even touch the list. They're probably top 20s. Like William Gallas for me, fantastic as well. Another French yeah. defender, fantastic, both at Chelsea and Arsenal. Um, you, you've got to be naming, as much as he's a twat, you've got to be naming your John Terry's and people like that in now. Fantastic centre half, Tony Adams, Martin Keown's, um, Dennis Irwin's, and people like that. Rio Vidic, Yapstam. Vidic, Yapstam nearly made my list. Yep, nearly Stam. made my list. When he when he was at Manchester United, best defender in the world. 
best friend in the world, no doubt about it. He was unbelievable, and they never recovered fully as well. When when he first went, they they went for a little bit of a patch where they didn't have that. I would say unit. for my old when I was writing down my all time list for me, it was between Stam and Poyle who made yeah, the list. Yeah, yeah, Carlos Poyle. Yeah, that's a, that's another one. Great. And Poyle, Poyle made the list. Leader, it's leader. A good centre half for me is a leader. A real, they should be the real leader, the big man for the team. Yeah, Poyo, what a player, what a what a player he was. Uh, coming in, mate, let's name some more then of uh, the list well, worthy. All you know, time for me, you know. the list, I'm going to say Nesta. Yeah. yeah. He's the, the the only defender ever to win player of the, well, player of the year. No, that's Cannavaro. No, that's Cannavaro. Oh, sorry. Cannavaro. <laughs> I'm literally, hang on, let me show you this. I'm literally looking at both of them there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, Cannavaro won it. <laughs> Cannavaro won, it um, won the World Cup. And then went on to win it again. Both of them. You could put both Ooh. of them as a, as a one. Sorry, I just thought of another one that could have made the current list is Benucci. Yeah. yeah. Just another one that could have made the current list. But yeah, sorry. Cannavaro and Nesta both made my all-time list. Um, again, just like absolute. For, for Italy, just absolute beasts. Just complete solid rocks. Um, proper world, world-class defenders. Mean, that, that is, you are not getting through us. That, that sort of level of defence really is. Um, was he was he a centre back or was he a right back? Oh, I'm going to put his name out. If he's a right back, he'll be on next week's show. But Cafu was he a right back? Cafu was a right back. Yeah, yeah. But what a player he was. He we'll save him for next week. Warm up and down that wing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mate, see, see when it gets to the fullbacks, there's so many fullbacks. Oh, there's there. some absolute worldly. I, I was I was thinking fullbacks the other day for left back Lillian Taram. Like what a player he was. Taram played right back, didn't he? Oh, right back. Sorry, yeah, right. Back. Yeah, because it was Lizaraz. No, he was left because Lizarazu was right. Sting sure. Lizarazu. I could have sworn Taran was a right back. Right, but the other way around. Yeah. The because I, I obviously Maldini probably the best defender of all time for me. Probably the best defender ever. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. I totally left agree. back Number one of our then generation. Transitioned over to centre back, so he was there. And to play at that level for so long, forty years old. To play at that level for so long, so consistent. At a big club at AC Milan. Like they've obviously they've faded away a little bit in recent times, but. Yeah, Maldini number one of our lifetime. Of our lifetime, remember that guy's our lifetime. Obviously, there's, there's you got, I don't know, this oh, we haven't well, even right. named any Germans in there. I mean, oh, but Botan, Botan, great defender as well for coming. Great defender again, though. Does he go on an all time list? He's got a, what? Not all time, not all time. I'm saying um, current, current for Botan. Yeah, I mean, really though, if you look at the defenders, like German defenders, I mean, uh, Laurent Blanc. Laurent Blanc, yeah, he was a fantastic defender, yeah. Blanc, Blanc was fantastic, yeah. Laurent Blanc, World Cup winner. What a player. Nice French to put in there. Yeah. We're so biased to Italy and France. Like, <laughs> the defenders, like I say, you're Tony Adams, um, you Rio, Sol Campbell. Sol Campbell, what a defender he was. Yeah, in his days, Sol, Sol, Sol yeah. Campbell. Yeah. This day. I really do, like, I really do want to see, every, like, the viewers, I want to see you guys, I want to see, please, put in your all-time defenders because we are like proper biased i i'm i lean really towards italy luke leans really towards france so let's let's try and get some more sort of let's expand our horizons a little bit yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, listen we, again do it in your lifetime guys you don't have to stick to our thing of 1990 obviously it's easy to name an all-time bobby moore franz beckenbauer maldini for me touches the all-time one like that that bobby moore um, back Beckenbauer one for me, Maldini. It's even that. He's in there uh, without a doubt, mate. Without a doubt, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's our top five uh, defenders. We will move on to either right back or left back next week, or maybe we'll do. We we'll just do. We we'll just doing both. Yeah. We'll do. We're doing both because there's there's so many to talk about. It's, I, I'm really looking forward to the fullback. It's just great <laughs> conversation. It's great conversation because there's no right or wrong answer. It's all opinions. It's just. It's just great to talk about. Um, yeah, let's go on to your questions, guys. Um, and that will be sort of how we can wrap it up this week. So very, very quickly, guys, <laughs> let me get the questions. Okay, first question from Come On You Irons on Twitter. Hello, chaps. Great podcast. Keep it up. We are signing players to try and actually win games rather than avoiding defeat. However, there hasn't been a strong link for central defensive mid. Are you guys worried about this or happy to go into the season with Kiati, Obiang or Noble? I think the key thing, mate, is you've missed Rice, who I yeah, think yeah. will be playing there. I agree, mate. 
Um, hundred percent. I think he sees Rice as that defensive midfielder. I mean, we have got Obian can play there. No, he's not that midfield destroyer, but he can play there. Kiate can play there. Again, it's not really his role, but he I can th play there. I think that's a good point you made there, mate. Actually, Rice is not a destroyer, is he? No, no. But he coming from a centre half, he can put a foot in and win the ball, and he can play the ball as well. To be fair, actually, I think. Rice is probably physically bigger than Obiang, but in time they're probably going to be very similar players, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Obviously, you know, if we do get the likes of, say, Yaya Torre, he's another one who can slot in there. Um, Stuaro come sit there and be a ball winner as well. So I don't know. There's, there, you know, if, if one of those two come in, yeah, you're right. We haven't been linked with a destroyer, but then. Do we do we need one? Maybe Pellegrini the thing wants is, well, some. How many destroyers are there actually out there? That's what I was going to say. Maybe maybe Pellegrini wants more of a Kante type CDM. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Greg, at this moment in time, what would be you guys, your guys, starting eleven? Mm. Well, it's pretty um, obvious, really. I I would know. My it 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 would be. I, I don't know who I'll play in goal. Yeah, I, I, would, I, I think Fabianski will start, but for me personally, I don't know. It's a coin toss. Um, Diop and Ogbonna, the two centre-halves for me. Yeah. Assuming we're playing four at the back. Um, I would play Masuaku above Cresswell on the left, yeah. just because I like him. Fredericks. <laughs> yeah. um, Fredericks, obviously, on the right. Um, then I think you're probably looking, going, going by what he played in the friendly what, it was four, he had four, back four, three, pretty much three up front, wasn't it? With one behind and then two midfielders. Um, that's that's the difficult position. Arnie, I reckon, on the left. Or maybe Arnie's playing up front. front. He I could play Arnie, Arnie up front, front with Yarmolenko on the left. If Anderson comes in, I think Anderson's going to play as a cam. I think Anderson's going to take Lanzini's position. I think Anderson's going to play just behind the striker. So I reckon Yarmolenko on the left, Arnautovic on the right, or vice versa, Yarmolenko on the right, Arnautovic on the left, Hernandez up front, Anderson just behind, and Wilshere then... Wilshere and Noble, or Wilshere and Rice. Yeah, Wilshere, Wilshere, and then, like you say, Rice, Noble, yeah. Mm. No, it's, it's, a, it's good problems to have, because, uh, you know, you, when you're saying who's playing there, you replace him with quality. And then when Lanzini does come back, you're thinking, why right, is there someone else who's going to be treading on their toes? And it's, it's a very good problem to have. Very, very good problem to have. Um, Aslan, what a great name. The lion from uh, Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, isn't it? Um, <laughs> are you Yaya or Yaya in or Yaya out? I would take him 100%. Yeah, I'll take him. He's 35, but I'll take him. He's getting on and he's not the player he was, but he's still like... He's still, for me, I think he's still class as long as he, as long as he's motivated. Mm. And I it's think the Pellegrini development that he can offer Declan Rice. That's what I always look at when you sign these sort of thirty-five-year-olds. It's like, is there players that will benefit from playing next to him? And they certainly will. They certainly will. Um, Smokey Jones, I sent you guys a question a couple of weeks ago about Carroll and what we should do with him. Have your opinions changed since hearing he's injured before the season? Also, didn't Carroll show up to pre-season early to impress Pellegrini? Um, yeah, my opinions haven't changed. Um, listen, on his day, which isn't often, he's a great player and he's very hard to defend against, but those days don't come enough and he needs to retire. At the end of the day, Dean Ashton retired for his ankle and I think it's just a bit of a joke it's becoming a bit of a joke now that oh he's injured again and we, we weren't even shocked you know when they said there was going to be an announcement we sort of was expecting it now yeah yeah no I agree exactly mate um, I'd, I think if it was me I mean we're never going to get any money for him I'd be tempted to just tear up his contract and be done with it to be honest like you say and I, I did say this last week I, I don't hate Andy Carroll I like Andy Carroll and he is a fantastic footballer <clears throat> as you say mate on his day, but you can't like we, you can't be spending hundred grand a week on someone who plays eight games a season. Do you know what I mean? You just can't do it. Yeah. Um, 
on goal hammer. How many are we going to beat Spurs by next season? Hopefully a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully, yeah. Yeah, no. Um, what, what's the positive thing, mate, is we're buying players to win games and not to, not to just try and stop goals and stuff. We're buying players that are game changers, potentially. Obviously, any, any transfers are gamble, as we know, but if they all pay off, you've got some real game changes there. And a lot of neutral pundits are talking about us for top eight finish next year, which will be great. Um, Common Your Iron says, do you think it will be harsh on the player if we sold Antonio? Not really. No, I don't think he wants to be at West Ham anyway, mate. I, I think he's been after a move for a while. Um, do, do you know what? I reckon if he does, is it Palace he's linked with? 15 yeah. million? I think yeah. 15 million, to be fair, is low. I think that's a low price for him. But if he goes there, he'll probably do well. But I, I, I guarantee it, he'll probably go to Palace, he'll do well, and then he'll be inkling for a move again. Mm-hmm. I just I just feel like he's probably that kind of player. Yeah. Which is I, a shame because when he when he first broke through he was fantastic. Oh he's so, brilliant, yeah. Um I, I wouldn't take less than twenty for him though, if I'm honest. I, I think you have got to be a bit stubborn because it looks like Zaha will potentially go. So they they will be looking for a replacement. So we don't have to sell. Well, we don't know whether we have to sell. We don't know what the uh, transfer sort of thing is with the money, but I I don't care if we do sell him. I, I won't be upset. Put it that way. Um, Ken Elfield, with all the new signings, where do you expect us to finish? I believe we can finish between eighth and sixth. Would be nice, mate. Would be nice. Oh, that would be fantastic. It's a good point, though. I mean, with the signings we've made and with the money that's been spent, assuming we don't then go and sell on our bitch, and if we uh, carry on bringing players in. The board are going to be looking at this season and they're going to be expecting... I reckon they're going to be expecting a European finish. Mm-hmm. I do. Or a cup run. Good cup yeah, run. Yeah. Um, and like you say, I mean, it, it all goes back to exactly what you said, mate. No no signing is proven, you know. So it depends how well everyone gels. If, if all these players come in and they're fantastic, why not? But who's to say? I just don't... And I say this every single year. I say it every year. I just hope the signings get given time by the fans. Mm. I just hope no, they get given time by the fans. Jesper, if we sign Yarmolenko, Balbuena and Anderson, how strong do you think the squad would be? Would that be enough or do you think we need to sign more? Well, it looks like all three are going to sign now. Obviously, that was sent a little bit earlier in the week. We look really strong. We look really, really strong if those deals do go over the line, which it looks like it does. But I don't think it's us finished. I really don't think that's it for West Ham. If it was to be it, I wouldn't be devastated, but I still think there's two potential problem areas there that can be improved. We definitely need a striker. We definitely need a striker. And we, we need another centre-half. Possibly a proper defensive midfielder. But yeah, Let us know what you think on that one, guys. Uh, Serif, which players in our squad would you sell and which players would you keep? Uh, we'll do the sell... Um, I'll tell you what, if players that... It's not so much I would sell, but I wouldn't be bothered if they went. Kiati, Obiang, um, Antonio, we just mentioned, Reed, mm, Fernandez. Yeah, I wouldn't be glad to see him go. I like Byram. him. Byram, yeah, sorry, I forgot about him. Byram. I'll be honest, I wouldn't be bothered if we sold Cresswell. No, I, I wouldn't don't be think bothered we will. if we sold Cresswell. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think I'd agree with Obiang. I quite like Obiang to stay. But, yeah, out of, um, because they were saying about Obiang, Kiati, and Antonio. Out of them, I would actually like to keep Obiang, yeah. yeah. And players to keep, obviously, most of the squad, but the key one is Arnie. It is Arnie. There's no, no point doing of all this business and then you go and get rid of your player of the year. There is no point. There really aren't. Um... Callum Davison, we sort of touched on it already. Thoughts on Cullen and Burke being moved on. Listen, it's football, and they haven't stepped up. That they haven't. It's not. It is their fault, but uh, that sounds really harsh. They're they're not there. You know that they've they've had time. They have had time, and they're just not that level. They're not the rice level that we've seen. Yeah, yeah I agree. Agree. Yeah. Um, that is it 
for this week, guys. Thank you so much. Um, shame we didn't have lead, but that was episode 80 of the Free Armors podcast. Hope you enjoyed our non-charismatic episode. <laughs> um, I will be. We will be back next week. Uh, left and right backs. Give us some ideas, guys. Any any that you've got current that are your favourites or any that you're all time. Let's give us some ideas, and hopefully, you know, even some more signings. It looks really, really positive now. The season is not long away now. Either what is it? Four weeks, five weeks now. 11th of August. Until then, guys, keep believing. Come on, you ones. Get on that subscribe button. 33 more for 2,500, which is a great achievement. That's what we wanted to hit before the season starts, and it looks like we will hit it now, which is great. Thanks again. Let's go. Cheers.